Here is the Ruby Young R630 Bluetooth speaker. This was sent to me for free by the manufacturer. That's why I'm marking this video as an advertisement. However, in this video, I will be stating my honest and unbiased opinions. I have now had this speaker for about a week, and during this week, I have probably used it for close to 10 hours. You can already tell, I really like this speaker. The main feature that the manufacturer is advertising is the customizable panel in front of the speakers. They have a whole Instagram account full of photos of all the different panels that they have produced. As you can see, I got this abstract artwork on here, which I actually do quite like. The speaker panel is easily removable by this tab in the corner, and if we do, we can take a look at the speaker configuration. As you can see, we have two five and a quarter inch woofers and two one inch tweeters. And yes, this speaker is stereo. I have run a series of test tones through this to confirm that. Of course, the stereo separation is not the best because the speakers are so close together, but it is there and it definitely does sound better than just a mono speaker. Let's take a closer look at the features and functions. All the way to the right, we already have the first unusual feature. It's a mechanical volume control potentiometer. This is nice because it gives you full control over the volume independent from whatever device you have connected to the speaker. So if you have this control set to low, you know that you won't get surprised by sudden loud music. And that's nice to know, especially late at night. Next along, we have the standby power button. In the center, we have the input selector. We have an analog auxiliary input, Bluetooth 5.0, and something I've never seen on any other Bluetooth speaker, a digital optical input. Next along, we have the pairing button for Bluetooth, and all the way to the left, another unusual feature, a mode selector for outdoor, hi-fi, or ambient. This is basically a tone control. In the outdoor mode, the treble is increased. In the hi-fi mode, the sound remains unchanged, of course. And in the ambient mode, the treble is reduced. And that is a nice feature because in this mode, the speaker provides a nice, unobtrusive, pleasant background music. Now, let's finally hear how this speaker sounds. But please keep in mind, you are listening to this through the camera microphones, through the sound processing of the camera, and through whatever sound processing YouTube does. First, let's demonstrate Bluetooth operation. Turn on the speaker. Press the pairing button. Mm. and activate Bluetooth on the phone and the speaker will show up in the list as Rube Young. So we connect to the speaker, go into our media player and here comes the music. Let's try out the different modes for the sound. This is outdoor.
hopefully you can hear, the treble is slightly increased, but without being unpleasant. Back to hi-fi. Let's switch over to ambient. little glitch was in the music source. That was not the fault of the speaker. But as you can hopefully hear, also the ambient mode provides a really pleasant, unobtrusive sound. And finally, while this might not be the ideal music to do it, let's turn the volume all the way up as high as it will go. camera's automatic level control probably compensated for that, but still, you should have been able to hear that even at maximum volume, there is absolutely no distortion. We are in hi-fi mode. is enough for the Bluetooth mode. Next, let's test the auxiliary analog audio input. For that, I have this record player connected. Now, it is important, if you want to connect a record player to this speaker, the record player must have a built-in phono preamplifier. Also, I'm playing this record on 33 RPM instead of 45 and at the wrong pitch to hopefully avoid any copyright problems, but still I'm only going to play a short segment. So here we go. <laughs> That has to be it. And here is another thing you can do. I now have the speaker connected to the television via the optical digital input. I have the image flipped to hopefully avoid any copyright problems, but let's give this a listen. Minus 8 Grad am Niederrhein, minus 4 Grad im Osten. Am Tag 10 Grad bei Seewind an der Ostsee, 24 Grad im Südwesten. Im Programm jetzt brisant, die nächste Ausgabe der Tagesschau um 20 Uhr. Ich wünsche noch einen schönen Abend. Here is a look at the back of the unit. Rated input power is 120 watts. That gives us an idea of the output power that this speaker is capable of. Down here is a standard figure of eight power connector for mains power, which this speaker needs. It does not have a built-in battery. Next along, we have a hard power switch. 
Then the optical digital input, the analog auxiliary input, and finally another unusual feature, an analog audio output. The manufacturer's idea is that you can daisy chain several speakers and have them all play the same music. However, this is just a standard line output independent from the volume control, so you could also use this as a record output. Now, you may wonder, is there anything to criticize about this speaker? Yes, there is. When the speaker is in a silent room and there is no music playing, you can hear a very faint hiss from the output amplifier. But I'm not criticizing that, because it's not unusual even for proper big hi-fi systems to have a very, very faint hiss. What I am criticizing is that when you use the switch on the front, to put the speaker into standby mode, the hiss continues unchanged. So the speaker does not deactivate the output amplifier in standby mode. So I would recommend to always use the hard power switch on the back to fully turn off the speaker. But aside from that, all in all, this is a great piece of equipment. I already said in the beginning that during the one week that I have had this, I have listened to it for close to 10 hours. I really like this speaker and I'm glad that I have it. And that does mean something. Thank you for watching.